Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Haji Mustafa gave such a beautiful talk about the the names and the prayer that uh, it's uh, hardly possible to float a petal on the cup of milk, so to speak. Um, but uh, I think what I'd like to do is um, do a little bit more with uh, <coughs> these treasures of the three wazifas um, that we use so often. Uh, this morning I spoke a bit about Subhanallah and its relation to uh, some of the older knowings that uh, we had as human beings. I think if we look, uh, and if Sheikh Fadlala asked me to do this a couple of years ago, try to find the, because he knew, he knew that I had looked at the Arabic in relationship to Jesus' Aramaic in relation to the Hebrew before it. So the whole Semitic language package, so to speak. <clears throat> and his idea, which I think was a, was a, a right idea, because uh, I said, well, you know, Sheikh Fadlal, this one's like this one, and this one's like this one. And he said, well, okay, Sheikh Saadi, p- pick out for me the 50 that, that are the most alike, for instance, and those will probably be the 50 that are the oldest in human consciousness. Linguistically, this makes sense because if you find a word that does not change substantially for a thousand or more years, that probably is a very deep knowing in human consciousness. It's fitter, you know, it's as you were saying, it's inbuilt. Or it was inbuilt for maybe 10,000 years, 100,000 years. So some things do change over time, even between Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, for instance. But other things are pretty much the same, and that's for a very long period of time. And they have very similar channels of feeling, meaning, if you will. They're, they're expressing knowings that we have as human beings about, our na- about the nature of reality, about the nature of Allah, about the nature of, of what all this is about. Um, a good example of one is, is the whole idea of, of what is sacred or what is holy in these traditions. Seems to be fairly stable, although if you talk to a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim, then you may not think so. <laughs> but in terms of the words that the prophets used, it is the same. So Hebrew, Kadosh, Aramaic, Kadash, Arabic, Kudus. The only thing that really changes is the, the first sound, K, becomes K in Arabic. But linguistically speaking, that's all, that means looking at languages over a long period of time, that's almost meaningless. Because this letter in all of these alphabets, when we had drawn alphabets, it has to do with, with carving, like a, like a tool that would carve something out of the earth, you know, carve space out of the earth, you know. What would you say, like a shovel? Or before we had shovels in probably human society, there were digging sticks. That seems to be the oldest in hunter-gatherer society. So you would you would make space for something, or you would try to find something by digging. Okay, here's a little plant, and underneath this plant is an edible root, and you have to know your environment to know which plants. <coughs> have edible roots underneath them. This is before agriculture. So then you'd have your stick and you sort of, and you don't want to dig too far because you'll, you know, you'll, you'll damage the root and the root is what you need to eat. Because mostly hunter-gatherers, they ate roots. I mean, the amount of times you're going to get a bison or a mammoth is very rare. 
actually. It's like, you know, and it only comes in certain seasons. So mostly they're living on these roots before they discovered what seed was about. Um, it's very, it's, if you think back, this is, this is most of our human history is spent with this. So the knowing then about how to gently create space out of something to find food, to find nurturance that's essential, that's a deep knowing in human, in human culture. So there would be a word for that. And it, the word becomes something like these words. Kadash, kadosh, nit kadash, kadash, ka The carving with the ah and then the sh sound at the end. Kadosh, kadash, kudus. Okay, and in Arabic, the S sound divides into several S sounds. So we have sh and s, and s and s, back and forward. Whereas in the older ones, they just basically had s up here in the lips and sh like this back in, the, in this part of the mouth. S and sh. Arabic becomes more refined. You don't need to know this. So for our purposes, this is still the same sound. Carving, space, in order to sort of be fed, right? It's like the tasting. We feel the tongue. Or, you know, what do we say when we want to keep a secret? You know, there's a secret there, something important, something that's not for every ear, not for all ears, not for all purposes, not for all ears to hear. Something special, right? Something to be set apart. So we still use certain sounds in this old, old, old way. So these sounds then, in terms of the alphabets, if you look at the, what the, each letter means, or what each letter has its symbol, it's space, which creates spaciousness around something very, very important. Okay? There's like a, a boundary around something that's very important. And we want to keep that boundary, keep that spaciousness around something important. Symbolically, it comes into geometry as a circle with a dot in the middle, which is sometimes used as this old sun symbol in some astrological systems. So dot with circle within it. So, you know, if the whole sky were sun, we'd be toast. <laughs> so the fact that the sun is a, is a luminous dot, you could say, with spaciousness around it, is sort of essential. As we're discovering, we need atmosphere. You know, our, our ancestors were pretty smart about these things. They knew these things. So this image, space with something important in the center, very old. What's a seed? A seed has fruit around it, right? Edible. And then, the, but the seed, well, maybe they didn't know what the seed was, but they, you know, they tossed it out. But and then something grew there later, and maybe that was how originally the knowledge of seeds came to people. I don't know. Uh, we don't, our history doesn't go back that far. We can only look inside of ourselves and think, Okay, what do we hold as sacred? What's special for us? What enlivens us, like Haji Mustafa was saying? You know, what gives us that himma, that enthusiasm? You know, what, what can we make, what can we focus on that brings the heart out? So the ancients, you could say the ancestors would say, well, that's kudus, that's kaddish, that's nit kaddish, as Jesus uses it in his Aramaic prayer. He says, and it says, at least in Jesus' prayer, let your shem be sacred. Let your name be sacred. Let your atmosphere be sacred. Let your vibration be sacred. Because again, shem in these languages can mean name or vibration or atmosphere. So we then, as humans, discovering language and developing these, how do we say, you know, we pass it down to our, 
our family. Okay, this is a way to remember what's important. This is a way. Do this. Remember this. Remember this story. You know, place your forehead on the earth. Uh, what does this mean? What does this mean? You know, what does it feel like? Okay. Two, what we thought were two or one. What we thought were above and beneath is one. You know, what I thought was I is non-existent. <laughs> you know. These are important things, right? They have to be. So they're almost like pre, they're so, lo, they're so old we forget how old they are. And it's only that we have these, I would call them lifeboats, of, that help us remember that we keep traveling. We, you know, these lifeboats of the Salat and the sounds and the Asmal Husna and the prayers and the Qasidas and all these things are like lifeboats. You know, it's like abandoned ship, <laughs> you know, bring the lifeboat. We've got, we need something to carry us the next bit. You know, come on. Everybody in the boats. Probably it was like that at many times. You know, they said, okay, well, you can't take anything with you, so remember this. And they did. So in these names that I looked up for Sheikh Fadlala, we have about 50 of them, I would say, of the 99. And maybe there's more, but I haven't found the rest in terms of because we have the Asmal Husna, the most beautiful, as is mentioned in the Hadith, and then there's extras, which are also beautiful. And we use them quite often. We did two this morning, uh, Ash-Shafi and uh, Al-Kafi. Uh, Shafi is in the most beautiful, Asmal al Husna, As- Asma al Husna, but um, Kafi is not, but it's still very beautiful, <laughs> even though it's not mentioned as one of the most beautiful. And there's, there's a number of ones that um, you could say we, we all ordinarily remember because they're, they're all, they're all, all, the, all the names, to, it says to Allah belongs, all the names, the ones we know, the ones we don't know. Again, as Haji Mustafa was saying, the ones that don't have words but are also names, to Allah belongs all these names. So um, these old ones are then probably the oldest remembrances that are carried then into out of nomadic culture, this is my theory, so excuse me, I'm burdening with you, but at least it keeps it simple. And now we have religion. Or let's say, let's not use the word religion, now we have ways, reliable ways to remember, reliable places to put our feet on. You know, the paths, there's, you know, the different sorts of Sharia and the different, pro- the different prophets then offer essentially you would say essentially the same way with, you could say, different flavors for different peoples in different areas, different generations. But if you look back, what unites them is is so much greater, and not just the three, but before the three, back into, you could say, our, our ancient humanness. These things, again, have to be built into us from the very beginning. That's the story. They're there from the first beginning, wherever that first beginning was. Um... Again, you know, he, you know, Allah offered it to the mountains. Okay, mountains say, again, <laughs> mountains reject. But you could, say the mount, you could say on the side of the mountains, maybe the mountains said they didn't want this, this burden of remembering and forgetting. So the mountains said, oh, Allah, you know, we like being mountains. We like just remembering all the time. We don't want to forget. We don't want this burden of of consciousness, of self-reflexive consciousness, of the individual I. We don't want this burden of an ego. Why would a mountain need an ego? It's useless, (laughs) frankly, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Think about it, (laughs) you know. uh, You know what, (laughs) and all the other beings before us, they didn't really want this either. Now you could look in, in the plants, you know, Ego, not really. Much more group consciousness, probably. Animals, maybe. Some budding form of, of an identification of an, indi- of an individuality, maybe. Some people now talk about some animals having, uh, some of the so-called higher animals, having ethics. Which means that, you know, an, an elephant sees another elephant stuck in the mud, 
that elephant will help the elephant out of the mud. That's pretty advanced, actually, because you have to be able to recognize first that, um, that I'm separate from that elephant and I can then do something to help that I'm here, I'm, uh, I'm here and he or she or it is there and I can actually do something to help that, that other being. So the notion of other beingness, separate self, so that's that's actually a big de that's actually a big thing in in the evolution of of reality's consciousness. Um, so we're we're not you know this, the notion that animals are sort of dumb have no consciousness they don't feel pain you know it's just, which people thought a couple hundred years ago that seems you know to be sort of not true. So the continuum of consciousness then is is much more smooth. Till it comes to Allah's to bid or bikum. You know. And we all said yes. <laughs> or what passes for yes in terms of what we, what we what's in the Quran. So you could argue that Ba'ala Shahidna may not be exactly yes, but it depends on which version you read. It may be more like why not? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't mean to make light of it because it's, you know, this is like the pivotal moment of our, of our, of our whole species, <laughs> when, when we were a species. But, you know, what is the essence of humanity? You know, the, the essence of humanity is like saying, you know, what's the worst thing that could go wrong? <laughs> Seriously. And now we know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I mean, maybe we don't know yet, but, you know, but that is the essence of, of having the permission to forget, you know. What's the worst, th you know, if I tried this, what's the worst thing that could go wrong? Isn't that, you know, that's, that's, the, that's right on this knife edge of the nafs. Yes, we could discover something new, hidden treasure, or we could totally mess it all up. <laughs> Also hidden treasure, but maybe not the hidden treasure we hoped for. You know, it's like the, you know, it's sort of one of these Arabian night stories where, you know, they're looking for this treasure, and then they open the bottle and this thing comes out and, you know, so the gin is, oh my God, oh no, Allah, halu ala kuwata, he's like, oh no, <laughs> what came out? You know, so it's like, it's both, it's both and, both and, both and. So, um, what we want to say at this point is alhamdulillah because each of us as one of my Quran teachers said each of us has hummed essence you could say the essence of that which is praiseworthy is also built into us hummed or from hamid right but the root of hamid is hummed and it's my, te my Quran teacher used to say you know um, he was Pakistani a Sufi. He says, uh, milk has hummed. The hummed of milk is that it wants to be drunk. The hummed of milk is that it wants to be drunk. That is, well, what's milk for? It's to be drunk. Not necessarily by humans, but, but it's, to be, it's to be drunk. It's to, there's, there's nurturance that's given, and it wants to be drunk. So, he says, the hummed of milk is that it wants to be drunk. Um, you could say the hummed of grass or of a plant is that, well, it has probably a number of different hummeds, but he used to say the, the, the hummed of the grass is that it wants the cow to eat it. Maybe that's not true. But anyway, it, this is what he's, so he's saying then all hummed is returning towards where? Towards reality. Li, la towards, preposition, le, la, towards the one, towards Allah, towards reality, towards the, it's all, all this hummed is, it's like amazing, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly. So when we say alhamdulillah, it's like saying, that's why we say it. <laughs> we can't do anything but do alhamdulillah, even when we screw it up. Um, although it's better than to say a law, 
if you've realized that you've screwed it up. But in the case that you, you happen to have the thought, oh, that was pretty good, best say alhamdulillah. <laughs> because that's what happened anyway. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with you <laughs> or with me. <laughs> So exactly, you know, as we were talking about. So let's do a little bit of that. Alhamdulillah. 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 Now let's continue as we did this morning on the breath. Again as a transition. Rhythmical breathing. This is just a a thing, you know, maybe it's helpful. Feel it, breathe the word, rhythmic breath. Feel the heart as part of it, the heartbeat as part of the rhythm. So breathing rhythm, rhythm of the heart, and then the sound mixing together, merging together. Blending. Your own, our own, ones you could say, if, to the extent that one has an own breath, which is very slim at this point. And then releasing the actual word and releasing at the same time the sense that we're doing anything. It's just, this is breath, practice is doing us. We still are feeling that flavor of offering, of dedication coming through us.
let's um, finish then. Um, Haji Mustafa also already gave us beautiful uh, tafsir, tawil, both on Allahu Akbar. Um, again, as he said, but I'll repeat it again. <laughs> it's important to get your... <laughs> we say in, in language, your comparatives straight. <laughs> you know, there's, there's good, better, and best. There's small, larger, even larger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our English word great is confusing because sometimes it means in the good, better, best scale, like that's really great. And other times it's of this other, small, larger, smaller, larger, greater, greater, greatest. And it's in that scale, so it's, it's confusing. But it shouldn't be confusing to an Arabic speaker, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> which is why I'm flummoxed. <laughs> if how Allah could mean uh, Allah's better than everything. <laughs> because there's nothing for Allah to be better than <laughs> outside of Allah, <laughs> self. I mean, it's, it's an doesn't make any sense. Or my God is greater than your God. Well, who's, you know, it's like Allah is no Allah to be better than any other Allah. You know, it's like, that's, 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 that's uh, it's impossible. You know, the, the language doesn't even allow it. You know, the whole of the tradition doesn't, anyway, I won't go into it. But, <laughs> so when I do, I mean, you do it your way, but when I do Allahu Akbar, <clears throat> it's always from a sense of, I really don't understand what's going on, but Allah's greater than this. Like, I really don't get it. <laughs> you know, when I look at the news or I look at this, or I like, oh, you know, I don't get it. You know, sometimes I have, you can get a big picture and you can think, oh, well, that's not going to turn out well. And, you know, so, uh, you know, you can see, oh, well, history, oh, oh well, this is not looking good. <laughs> But other times you just think, I really don't know where all this is all going. And I have to trust um, that I really don't know and that Allah is great. Allah is bigger than this. You know, knows more, bigger, the whole thing, more kabir, you know, more khabir, more khabir, both of those kabirs, sort of the slower growing one, the big, you know, all of it. <clears throat> we just have to trust. Um, and so it's really was almost with a sense of resignation. Although I wouldn't say resignation, it's just like rest, you know, resting, safety net. Uh, Allah is going to is going to be like that. So uh, one of my one of the teachers of my teachers said, um, and this was Sufi Amin Murad. He said he went to the tomb of Mian Mir in Pakistan. You've been there probably, Munah. Huh? And he said he, he heard from the saint as he was, as he was meditating on Allahu Akbar that uh, for him the inner meaning was peace is power. Now, literally, salam is not in the wazifa, and none of the power wazifas are there really either, not Az, you know, Aziz or any of the other ones, or Qad or any of these. But for him he got sort of the inner meaning of the meaning of the meaning is when you trust that Allah is bigger than this situation, any situation, you can rest in that. That's, that's a sense of peacefulness that is so deep that it is, it is very powerful and doesn't need, really need to express itself in any outer way in that sense. It's just the, you could say, the resignation. So uh, this is what he gave that came to me from the person that got it and gave it to me, which is how it all happens, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu Akbar.
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Okay, even a little bit more inner now. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then just easily into the breath, a thick And then the breath is just doing us. It's part, we don't own the breath. It's just part of something larger, much larger.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اهتنا الصراط المستقيم اهتنا الصراط المستقيم اهتنا الصراط المستقيم